I will show you how to model a Japanese shrine inside Unreal Engine 5. If you want to learn to model inside Unreal, then this tutorial is for you. You will learn the most common operations to model and how to manipulate polygons. You will also learn some new features from 5.1 to create more complex patterns. You will learn how to deform objects and how to add UVs. And finally, you will learn how to create your own blueprint to add ropes. Learn to create an action game in Unreal Engine 5. Start the first lesson for free at unfgames.com. So before we get into anything, we need to check the reference. And I found that there are some different kinds of toys. Like you have like this, for example, like this, like this. Like there are just different types. I don't know why. It's like, I don't if someone knows the reason just let me know in the comments because i don't know why they design different stories uh i know it's some kind of like entrance for a temple or something like that but um in my research i found that there are basically you have like two cylinders here three boxes basically and we're gonna do this thing uh, it's a little bit, uh, I'm going to show you how to do it in Unreal too. It looks a little bit complex, so we're going to do that. Uh, looks like a nice challenge. So we're going to do this one. Um, I don't feel like I'm going for something like this, because it's a little bit too simple. Uh, so we can do something like this. I don't think I'm going to do the, the letters, but let's see. Uh, the other thing, they all have a rope, um, and the rope gets thicker. So uh maybe we're gonna create a blueprint for that uh where we can just create a rope and this kind of thing um let's see if we will make it or not otherwise we can just make a simple simple story uh like this one for example looks really nice this one too this one looks really nice too uh maybe we can go for something like this so before you start modeling anything it's always a good idea to find some reference otherwise you don't know what to model right if you want to improve your modeling skills it's not only about like uh you know what button to press or something like that it's mostly about you know what model and uh, you know what are the forms what are the shapes and then you just copy that that's all you need to do so now that we have this uh let's jump right into unreal so we can start modeling so we're in Unreal now. So we're going to create a new level. Let's go to File, New Level, and then go here to Basic. Here you will see that I just have an empty space. So if I, if I play here, like nothing happens. But I can go here to my World Settings. I don't know if you see, it, but uh, just in case, uh, go here to the Game Mode Override. And here you can just put a third-person game mode. I already add a third-person game mode. I just go to Add. Uh, feature content pack and I just choose a third person, add the project and that's it. Now when I hit play this green icon here you can just basically run and this will be good to test the scale of our story. That's basically what we want. So let's start with the big shapes. Like if we check our reference here uh, you will see that I have like a big big tubes here, like big cylinders. And they're a little bit taper. So we're going to create that. Uh, the first step is just to check the scale. So uh, first, let me save Control S here. to some map, like 30 map, something like that. Let's just go to selection mode, go to modeling. And now uh, I'm going to go here to the cylinder. And just like this, uh, I can just leave it like 16 slices i can put 24 if i want it to make it like more high definition if i check with alt 2 you will see the wireframe uh, you can also check the wireframe here if you press it so if i change the slices to 32 for example i will have like much more definition um it's okay we can do that so let's just click accept and now let's play our game and you will see that our cylinder is just too small compared to the reference here. So what we need to do is to basically make it bigger. And we're going to do that by clicking here and go to poly edit. And inside poly edit, you have a bunch of stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm, not go, I'm not going 
through all of them. Uh, you can check my modeling tools tutorial in the channel. I put a link in the description. I go th uh, through all the tools here. Uh, there have been some changes in the user experience. That's why I'm making this video. So what I can do here is basically use the gizmo, just clicking on a face. And you can check the filter here. If you don't want to select faces, you can just select the vertex here. Uh, in my case, I want to select all of them. So I can just select this one, for example, and just make it tall, just like that. OK, then just click Accept. And let's just play our game. Press F11 if you want to have a like a bigger screen. This looks OK to me. Uh, but let's check a reference. Look at the human here. Like they, this is huge. So like the human is like here, right? So uh, let's go for something huge. Too. Let's, let's see why not. So the human is here. Uh, let's just make it just a little bit taller. So let's just go back to the poly edit and let's just put something like this. And this should be uh, good enough. Okay. So how do I create the base? Um, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to duplicate this by holding Alt and click. And if you make changes here, like for example, I decide to make this one smaller and accept, you will see that both of them are updating. Okay, so let me undo this. So the reason is we're updating this by pressing Control B. I can find it here in my folder. So you will see that I only have one asset. So instead of going here and right click and duplicate the asset and drag it into the world, I can use the modeling tools to just do that. I can just go here to mesh duplicate. And just by clicking here, I can just click accept. And now when I change this, for example, to something like this, OK, now when I accept um, my story, uh, the base uh, won't get affected. Now I have two different objects. Now I can just put this one here and try to make it like in the center, but I, I can align them with the tool. So what I can do is to first select this one, then select another one. And then you will see that as I select two objects here, more options are available. If I only select one, some options are only available for one object. If I select two of them, notice that the selections that were only for one object are disabled, and I, I have new ones. In my case, I want to go here to the Transform and click Align. And what I will do is to, I can align in different axes. For example, I can align in all of them. And by doing this, by combining this, I'm already aligning them to the center. Now, in my case, I want to align to the last selected object, which means this big object here will stay in place. And this small object will go here. If I don't want to align to the C axis, I can just leave it like that. So I can just click Accept. And now you will see that I have my cylinder here. Now, if you have a problem selecting uh, your, your objects here, take a look at the, at the outliner here. You, you will see that I have my cylinder and my cylinder tree. What I can do now is go to Details or press F4. I can just change the scale here. Or I can just press R and with the scale here, let me put turn on the snapping. I can just do something like this. OK, so great. Uh, now that we have this, let's play from here. Right click play from here. And um, you will see here that now I have the base of my Tori. Now it's a good start. Uh, we're going to we're going to stop right here and let's see how we can make this look a little bit prettier. So the next thing we're going to do is to add a little bit of a bevel here. And it's very easy to do in Unreal. As you, if you see the reference here, you will see that it goes up and then goes like this and then goes like this, right? It's like a shape like this. And right now we have something like this. That is very boxy. You don't really want that in games. Uh, it looks ugly. We will avoid this at all costs. So how we will do this? We're going to do a bevel. So we're going to go here to modeling. OK, and now I'm going to the poly edit. And what I will do is just select this face here. And I will do a bevel. And just by doing that, you will see that I have something like that. 
I can increase the bevel distance to have something like this, for example, right? And this will basically give me what I want. I can increase the distance a little bit more, just like that, and click Accept. And now what I can do to make this transition a little bit nicer, I can just go here again and do another bevel. Or I can go to the Edge Edit. I can select a Edge Loop here by clicking here and then go to Bevel. And you will see that I can make another bevel here. Now I want to select for both edge loops. So I'm going to poly edit and select this edge loop and shift click and select this one. And then I'm going to bevel. Now you can always use the face. It's just that I wanted to show you how you can select different uh, edge loops, right? If you click on the face, it will be the same. So let me just go for something like this, just to add a little bit more definition here. And just by doing that, click Accept. And now when we play our game here, you will see that we have a nice bevel going on. Now, uh, we can move this thing here. We don't really need to make it exactly in position, right? Um, this size looks OK to me. Uh, we can do the same here. We can just go here, go to Modeling. And here, you can just go to to the face, face selection, and go to the bevel here. Yeah, let's find it, face edit, bevel. And you will see that you have a bevel here. Let's do something like that. Uh, so far, I haven't found any way to do like a multiple bevel, at least in the modeling tools. Maybe you can do it in geometry scripting. So what I will do is to basically increase the bevel of this. Because in real life, nothing is uh, too straight. Uh, everything has like some uh, variation here. Uh, so what we will do um, is to duplicate this thing. And so now these are instances. I'm just holding Alt and click to duplicate this. So let's play our game to check how it looks like. OK, great. So now I have my Tori. It looks like the space could be a little bit wider. So I'm going to pose for something like this. And look at that. Now we have like a, a nice bevel in our cylinders, which makes them look much better. OK, so next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to work on the details here, because I'm going to show you a super cool feature that can help us to create this kind of detail. Let's take a look at these details here that you see here. It's basically a shape. Uh, like this. Uh, let me draw it for you with my super drawing skills. I can just go up and then go something like this and then go down. It's kind of like a flower. And it's like in the cylinder and it's like bended a little bit. So if you take a look at the side view, it will be something like this, maybe. Um, this is just personal preference. I think it's a great opportunity to show you a new tool that came with a 5.1. Uh, and it's going to be great. Now, each part is divided into like, like different segments, like Kusabi, Shimaki, Kasagi, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're going to go into different elements. But for now, usually I leave these details at the end. Uh, but I want to show you how to create this mesh. So let's go back to Unreal. And now what, what we will create is a cylinder. It's always a good idea to analyze your shapes. So we're going to create a cylinder here. And we can leave it at 32. It's OK. I think it's OK. So let's just click on this one and click Accept. And what we're going to do is to go to Poly Edit, select the face, and move it down just like this so we can have like a flat area. Now what we're going to do is to do a plane cut here in that tree tree model you can just do a plane cut and by default it's gonna cut to the top you will see a gizmo here i can just rotate this into the y axis and make sure it's 90 degrees okay so now i have something like this which is great right so let's accept and now what i can do is to basically move this part here a little bit to the right. And we're going to do that with the lattice. So let's go to the lattice here. And you will see I have a bunch of control points. 
I can change this, for example, by tree, by tree, by tree. And by doing that, basically, uh, I can just select these points. But before doing that, make sure you don't have the linear. I will show you what the linear does. If we do this, you will have something like this. Now, this may be something you're looking for. Let me control C. If you go to cubic, cubic, uh, you can just do something like this and have like a smoother result. Now, if we check our reference, uh, you will see it's a little pointy, right? So what I will do is to just go here, just a little bit, and then go to the linear, and then go back again here. Just so that I can have something like this. And because we have enough resolution, we're supporting this shape. So let's go back and let's just create something like this. This looks good enough to me. Let's click Accept. And now what I'm going to do is just to extrude this part. I'm going to go to the poly edit. I'm going here. And instead, uh, I could just go for something like this to make this shape look a little bit more roundy. Uh, in my case, I'm going to go a little bit more. And then I'm going to go here to extrude. Okay. If I extrude here, you will see that I'm adding another face. Uh, extrusion, it's uh, just... Um, a very common operation, you extrude polygons and then you can just extrude them along the normal here. And we can just do something like this. Notice that how Unreal already give you like um, uh, some UVs to work on. But that's great. Now we have something like this. Uh, what we can do here is put some edge loops. So we're going to go here. To the poly edit and then i'm gonna insert edge loop here and i'm and now i'm gonna just find an angle where i can see my edge loops and i can just go here and go here just like that okay so now that i have this i can just accept and now i can go here to my lattice and i can go here and i can just scale it something like this and i can do the same here Actually, I'm, I'm going to leave it like this, OK? And I'm just going to scale it a little bit, just like this. You saw that we have a, like a little curve here, OK? Uh, click Accept or Enter. Uh, let's do a lattice again. Uh, this time, we're going to do a 5 by 5 by 5. And we're going to do a cubic one. And let's go back here and let's just scale this thing a little bit. And then go back here and scale it. And that's that looks nicer. Let's just go back here and try to try to put it like this. Okay, great. So let's accept. One thing I'm gonna do before um basically finishing this, I'm gonna change the pivot point because if I drag this here, you will see that I have the pivot point here. And when I rotate it around, it's just like this. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is to basically um, change the pivot point by clicking here on pivot and then maybe choose one of the presets. Maybe choose the right, the bottom, the top, the left. One of these should be, OK, the front. It is the front. So let's accept. And now, because if we drag the mesh, it's going to be like on the floor, just like that. Uh, we can just rotate this around, right? Now, rotating this doesn't mean that your mesh, when you drag it next time, it's going to be rotated. Just like we did before, uh, we need to um, make sure these are the original values. If you check here, you will see that I have my rotation in 90 degrees. And if I drag the object here, like this one, you will see that the rotation is like zero. So uh, what I want is to make this 90 degrees the new zero. And I'm going to bake the rotation and scale just by clicking here in the transform. Uh, you don't need to change anything here. Just bake rotation, bake scale. If you want to bake the scale, you can do that too. So click Accept. And look at that. Now we have changed the rotation here. And now when I drag this, you will see that I can just put my mesh here. Now, uh, what we will do now is to put this mesh here to add the detail to our column. Now, to make this uh, feel like it's like 
in position. I cannot just drag here, duplicate, you know, scale it, put it in position, rotate it, put it again. It's going to take a long time and it's going to not look nice. So what we're going to do is a new tool that they put called pattern here. So let me just uh, duplicate this. Okay. And when we go to the pattern here, you will see that by default, I'm using a line just like this. Okay. I'm using a line. So I don't, I don't want that. Uh, what I want to use, uh, it's not a grid, it's a circle. And you will see that I have my meshes here. Now, um, I can reduce the radius uh, and basically make them tighter, just like this, depending on how many of them I want. For example, if I want more of them, like 12 or 13, or maybe let's just go for 13, or let's just go for 12. I need to decrease the, increase the radius a little bit so just so that they don't collide, okay? So let's leave them like that, okay? This looks like a nice number of meshes. Let's take a look at our reference here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, it has a little bit more, so let's just go for 16. And let's just reduce their, increase their radius just like this. There you go. So now that we have this, let's click Accept. Now, uh, you notice here that uh, we didn't add more detail here. Well, basically, this instance here, it's actually um, an instance of this. So if I if I change this, for example, I, I decide I, I just move this one like this, you will see that all of them are updating. That's the neat part of this. A couple of things I will do. First, I'm going to do a bevel, okay? So let's go to poly edit, and I'm going to select the edge loop. Select all of this. Shift click and select all the edge loops, just like this. And what I'm going to do is to go here to the bevel tab, and I'm going to put something like this. There you go. That's nice. We're going to leave it like that. Click accept. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is to make this thing. Um, actually, uh, we can do this later. Uh, instead, uh, we can either do the lattice here. Okay. Go three by three by three. And then just go forward like this. Just a little bit. Okay. And then just go here. Actually, it's on the other side. So uh, instead of doing it like that, uh, I'm going to add some UVs. So let me go here to the UVs. And I'm going to Auto UV. And you will see that by default, I have something like this, which looks nice. I can just put initial patches like four or five. It's basically like the number of uh, patches you will have. You will see here that I have my patches here. So if I put 100, um, this kind of thing works, right? Uh, for me, it's okay. Feel free to play with the with the settings. I, I can just put five or six. Yeah, six looks nicer. Uh, let's go for seven. Yeah, it's okay. So let's accept. And now everything has UVs. Uh, let's do another uh, another pattern. So we can just click here. And now, if we don't see it, it's because it's in the same position, we can just increase the radius or something like this to 280, 290. And 290 looks like a nice number. So I can just change the start angle for something like minus 90 and go for 270. Then you will see it's in the same position. I can just change the angle shift. And then just go for something like 30 or 35. See if 35 is like a nice number. It looks like it is. So let's go for it. Uh, let's accept. And now you will see that I have my mesh here. What I can do now is just go here, control click. Sorry, uh, yeah, control click, sorry. Uh, and then alt click this. Now I will create a new mesh here. Go to Mesh Merge, 
new object, click accept. And because I still have this backup, I can go here and change some settings if I want it. I haven't lose anything. So now I have everything in the middle. Let me let me click this and then click the other one. And, and then just let's just click align. And just by doing that, we have aligned our mesh. So let's go back here, remove our scale here, the snapping, and then just go for something like this. And let's try to put it into position here. Uh, something like that. Let, let's put like 0 0.18. 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.18. Uh, something like that it's fine uh, what you can do now because i added some extra polygons you can see that i can just go and do some uh, lattice okay and i will grab the points in the top just like this and make sure you grab everything now you, what you can do is just to scale them like this because if you check your reference here you will see that you have like uh, it is a low resolution image, but you see that these things are bended and you will see a silhouette here, just something like that. Something like that. Like it's, if you zoom in, it's like this, right? It's not like part of the cylinder, like this. It's like, it's, it pops out and then come back, right? So uh, if you want to take your art level to the next level, uh, you're gonna make sure you have you, you make the silhouette right. So let's just go here and we can exaggerate things a little bit if we want. Just to have something like a little bit more stylized. So let's just go for something like this. And now that I have this, I can just alt click and I can just control click on this one and align it. Click accept. And now I have look what I have here. Now remember to save, go to file and then save all or control control shift S. I can just click from here and you will see that now my column has the decoration elements. Now, I know it's uh, a little bit overwhelming, but this is the hardest part. The next parts are gonna be a little bit easier. Uh, there are more simple shapes, but I wanted to uh, take this moment to show you this new feature in Unreal Engine 5. I think it's super good. So you can create like different patterns and create complex shapes like this one. So let's, go and let's start creating the next part of our story. It's time to create this large box you see here that connects the two columns. Uh, it also has a name, the Nuki. So if, if you want to call it like box or Nuki, whatever you want. So let's create it. Let's go back to Unreal. And we're just I'm gonna check here. I have another angle for for this for this thing, I believe. Yeah, something like this. It's nice to have reference like from these angles. You can see the the width of of this box. You can see like it's in the middle of this. So um we're just gonna create a box. It would be super simple. I'm sure you can do it without me. You can just go to modeling. Uh you can just go to box. And then let's just put it here, right? And just like that, um, what you can do is to basically increase the size of this. So I can just move it into the middle, right? And then just go for something like this. And then go for something like this. Now let's see if that's the size we're looking for. It should be. It looks very, uh, very thin. So we're gonna go for, yeah, we're gonna go for something like that. Okay. So now that we have this, uh, make sure you put this um, truth like this. Okay. And now let's take a look at this. Uh, it this thing should be like you know, in the middle of this. So we can just go here and let's just go back here and yeah, something like that. Now, this is a perfect opportunity for you to adjust the proportions. If you see this uh, reference, the proportions are not right. 
So what we will do, and let me put the reference in my other window so I can just take a look at this and I don't continue to bother you with the, with the reference. What I can do is to basically, I, I need to decide whether this thing is too white or this thing is too short. And I feel it's too short. So what I'm going to do is to put this one here. And then I'm going here. Uh, I'm going to drag this, go to the poly edit, then select all of those, these two here. And I'm just going to put them here. Just like that. Now let's accept. And you will see that I have two columns now. Now this looks much better in my opinion. So we're going to, we're going to keep it. Um, let's see if the width of this is okay. Looks fine to me. Uh, what we can do is to actually put it in the middle. Uh, it can be something like this. Now, why I don't use the mirror modifier is because in real life, things are not like perfect. Uh, a good thing is just to train your eye and try to see if this is exactly like the same. You could go back here and then you can put a mirror object just like this to have it like perfectly symmetrical. In my case, uh, I like to things to feel more organic. So uh, I wanted to show you the mirror, but maybe for, for another one. Uh, but let's just keep it like this. It looks okay from my side. So guess what? Now let's let's add a bevel. So we can just go to poly edit and we can just go back here and select all these faces here. And now we can just do a bevel. So let's just go back to bevel here and let's make sure everything has a bevel and it does. So Let's go and put something like two, maybe. Now you see it's stretching out a little bit. Uh, maybe it's because our scale is not is not right. Maybe, uh, but in this case, uh, let's just put it like this. Okay. Yeah, it it looks okay. So let's click accept, and now we have a bevel. Now this box haven't changed a bit. So if we go to control b and then drag the box there is nothing but the bevel here and you see like the bevel is even wrong here so what we're gonna do is to control c let's remove this bevel and before doing the bevel make sure that your scale is right so we're gonna go here to the bake rotation and scale click accept and then let's go back to the poly edit and let's click on all these faces again and now we can do a bevel. Now it's much better. Now if we go here, you will see that I have a bevel here. Okay. Now make sure uh, you select all of those. Otherwise, you can just select the, the edges that you want to put the bevel. Something like this. And you can select all of those. Basically, basically all the edges here. In that case, you don't find your bevel. I find it's a little bit not too intuitive to put the bevels inside this tool. So just bear with me. So let's go to the bevel and now it's much better. Now we can just go back here and uh, make sure you have enough bevel so that from distance you will see like a small little ring light. Okay, so let's just go back here. We can, we can leave it like that. Awesome. So now that we have this, um, we can create the next one. So uh, let's do that now. So to create the next cube, it's very easy. We just go in here and let's duplicate. And then we're going to move it like this. Just like that. Now, uh, if you check the reference, you will see that it's like this. We can just put them here in position, just like that. And there is some stretching in the bevel if I do it like this way. Uh, I really don't mind from this angle. I, I really, really don't mind. So we can just go back here and, and put something, put something like this. Okay. Um, 
these are all at the same height. So what we're going to do is to basically duplicate this one one more time. And this time, we're going to mesh duplicate and click Accept. And we're going to have another duplicate of this mesh, OK? So I don't know why the scale is like this. Like this could be like one. Oh, OK. Um, OK, let's. Uh, we, you can just scale this or just duplicate this one too. OK, uh, you don't want to. You don't want to mess with everything. Let's just bake the scale and let's just bake the scale here. OK, so now that we have this, uh, we can just scale it a little bit. Just like that. And also, this one is a little bit wider, just like this. Just a little bit wider. OK, so let's take a look at Autori. It looks fine to me. So if you see the reference, I'm going to show you here. They all have like a small curve here. And this is a great opportunity for us to use the deformation modifiers we have been using. We don't really need to model this. So before doing that, we need to add some edges. So first, let's just bake the transform as always. Let's just always work with the scale of one. It's always good practice, OK? Um, and we will just add some edges here. So let's just go to poly edit, insert edge loop. And we're just going to add a bunch of those like this. You don't need to be exact. Just something like this. You said you saw that we have enough resolution. Just make sure they look kind of even. They do. So what we're going to do. Uh, let's check the. Let's check the reference. Um, it's basically like a little curve here. So what I can do is to go to the FFD modifier. And let's go to 2 by 2 by 2. And let's drop these two. And actually, we can just move it. Let's just put that snapping so we can have like something like this. Yeah, something, something like that. And let's do the same here. Something like that. Let's accept. And now we can just go to another modifier. Go 3 by 3 by 3. And now what we're going to do is to grab all these points here. Make sure you grab all of them. And now you can just go back, remove the snapping here. You don't really need it. And do something like this. And you can do the same here to make it like more stylized. You can do something like this. Yeah, some, something like that. OK, uh, let's just go back here. Move it a little bit to the left, and this one also a little bit to the left. And just like that, we have the, the top of our Tori, which is great. Uh, now it's a good idea to just try our game. Let's just move these things out of our way. OK, let's save it, Control shift s to save. And now you will see that I have my Tori here. Now, uh, we have most of the main elements. We just need a couple of more elements to finish this. But there's also a, a problem with the scale. This feels like it's just big for no reason, right? But in reality, we need to fix this by putting some smaller elements. This thing is actually helping us, because if we remove it, you will think that this is just a big story, right? But if we put this thing, it's like, oh, actually, it's much bigger than what it looks like. And we actually have something to reference from. So we're going to keep adding some smaller elements that are important from our story to make this thing look nicer. So let's create the other elements. I'm sure you can do this one. It's just a box, right? And we're going to put a bevel on it. And here, we're going to reuse the thing we put in the top. OK, and this will be basically our story. So what we will do is to just go here to the modeling tools, create a box, put it here, accept. Now let's just try to put it in position here. Uh, let's just go to poly edit and make sure you select the faces, click here. 
move it around, move it around here, and make sure like you have like a nice size for this. Okay, let's just go back to the top and put it here, something like that, and also go back here and make it like this. Okay, so now you have something like this. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit wider, just like that. It looks like a nice angle, so I'm just going to click here and click here, and then I'm going to align this. Uh, remember that last selected, and I'm not going to align in C axis, so I'm just going to click OK, and this will be perfectly in the middle. So that's one thing. Uh, next thing, I'm going to add a bevel, so I'm just going to go here. Gonna select these two, which are the only ones I, I'm seeing. Let's just go for a bevel and do something like this. Nice. So now we're gonna add this thing here. Uh, if you don't want to call it thing, it's called uh, Kusabi. Okay. And it's just pretty much like this. It's exactly the same, it's just smaller. Okay. So we're gonna just duplicate the, the one we did. Uh, so let's just alt click and then go to mesh dub, click accept. And now we have another mesh, so we don't need to worry about making any changes. We can just scale this thing like this. Okay, let me take a look at my reference here. I will put it here on the right so I can take a look at what's the size of this. So basically, I need to make it a little bit shorter and a little bit taller. Okay, this looks okay to me. And I don't really need to do anything else. I, I can just go to make the transform tools, uh, bake rotation and scale, click OK. And now this will be your new one. Now. So now what you can do is just duplicate this thing and you will have something like this. Okay. Um, we have pretty much uh, covered the main elements. Let's go and add a small detail here. So oh, let's add one last detail here, which is this little tubes here. I know that image is a little bit blurry, but it's basically like a tube here, like it's supporting these stones, or I guess there are stones, they look like one. So let's just go and create a cylinder here. Let's just click accept. And now we're gonna go to the poly edit and we're just gonna make it really thin here something like that okay and now what we can do is basically make it a little bit like this and then you're gonna click here and then go to align okay uh you're gonna click all of them and go to the last selected and let's use align in c just for this time so we can see it so we can go here and we can move it down. And let's see if this is uh, enough size, looks like. So uh, we're gonna bake the transform, bake the transform here. And we're gonna go here and then duplicate this one here. So now what we can do is to go and add a bevel. So we can just go to poly edit, click on this one, click on this one. And then just go here to, actually, let's just click on the here. We don't really need to click on all of them. And then let's just go here to bevel. And let's just not put a very wide distance, just something like this. And then click just accept. And now you have a small little detail here. Now, what you can do now is to make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit nicer. You can just go here and go to the, uh, to the deform tool and go to lattice and let's just put two by two by two and let's put a cubic one now what we can do is to basically change the scale a little bit just like that so it have like a taper here which is nice uh small irregularities but they actually make a big difference so if we accept now you will see that our story looks much 
nicer. Um, I think that's all the details that I will add here. Uh, let's play with the light with Control L. You can just play with the shadows here. Uh, let's add some materials into this so we can, you know, at least not have this default grid material. So what I will do is just to add some mega scans here. So I will just go here at pixel content. And looks like it's like painted wood, but I didn't find it. So here, basically, I can browse through different materials I can use, right? Um, you can just like, for example, like click on this one, and then I can just download a medium quality one and click download. And after it's finished, it will uh, basically appear in my local folder, just like this one. Okay. So let's just wait a little bit. Loading. So basically, here are all my the textures that I download. I find that you know maybe something like this could be nice for our for our Tori. So I will just add this thing. Okay. So just by doing this, let's click uh, save everything. Let's just put the material here. So what we can do is to control space to open the content drawer. Go to Megascans folder, go to surface, and then you will find here. Uh, let's just go here to the filter and let's just put materials, material instance. And let's just see how, uh, how it looks like. Like, is it this one? Uh, maybe this one. Okay, so uh, what's the problem with this is that the UVs are wrong, so we need to fix them. Uh, how are we going to do that? We're, it's going to be very easy. We're just going to go to modeling. And we're going to go here to the UV tools. And we're going to project. And we're going to project here, it, not a plane. We're going to create a cylinder. OK. And if you want to see how the UVs really look, you can just go to the checkerboard. And you will see it's uh, a, a little bit long. You want all your checkerboards to be like a square. So if you check the original material, you will see it's actually a stretch. So what you can do is to change the C axis value to something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah, just like that, you, you see uh, you have a nice square uh, pattern. Now you can go to the original one, and you will see that you have something like this, which is great. Now click Accept. And because this is an uh, instance, uh, basically you have the same. If you don't want to see the same texture, very easy, just rotate it. That's it. Uh, you can rotate it like 30 degrees or I don't know, whatever you want, and it won't be the same. Let's do the same for this one. We're going to do the project, and we're going to do a box. And let's go here and check the checkerboard. And now let's click here in the dimensions. By default, it does a great job, actually. So let's let's save it. OK, let's do the same here. Let's go to Project, uh, Dimensions, Reset Property to uh, Default Value. Uh, this looks like a, a little bit dense. Uh, so we're, we're going to go for it. I'm going to show you how it looks like. It looks OK. Actually, it has pretty much like the same Textile density. We're going to do the same here. I'm just going to put this one here. Let's, let's just put it everywhere. OK, so now let's just go here and do another project. Uh, where is it? UVs project. Go back here. Accept. Go here. Project. You know, repetition is everything for game development. If you think you're going to be original the whole time, you got the wrong industry. Uh, let's go back here. This one already has the UVs. But this one, um, you know, it's true. This one has the UVs, but it's the same texture every time. So what you can do is to go to project. And you can go for a cylinder look if you want and click like this. And now when you check the original one, you will see that all of them have like different values. OK, which is nice. Uh, you can actually change the, the scale. Like, for example, change the scale to 2 by 2 if it's this is too small for you. And let's just click Accept. And now everything will have, like, its own UVs. It's, it's a little bit stretched, but, you know, it works. Let's put the same here. 
actually not the same here let's go back to this one just like this and let's let's do the project again and we're gonna put a cylinder we're gonna put the default values by putting the default values you are already putting like a is getting the the size of the object and it's gonna give you the most optimal result for this so let's just click accept and if you don't want the texture to be, look like the same they just rotate around now this is great uh I could uh, make some changes here because it's like super wide. So I can use control space and go here to my material. And here you will see that I can have the albedo tint. I can just put something uh, like this color, for example, if I want to match my reference. or so if I want to have something like red, I can definitely do that. Right? Now what you can do is to save this thing you can just grab it here to the color picker so you have like a palette of colors that you can use and you want to put this into you know different um uh, different objects different colors so you can just duplicate this one and let's just double click on this and we're gonna we're gonna put it here just to try it out right we're gonna put it here in the bottom and we're gonna use uh, if you want color harmony in your thing in your things just change the hue a little bit just like this just a little bit or if you want you can just change it here like it's five point something you can go for six right or you can just just use your eyes for this and then just uh decrease the saturation or the value a little bit and the saturation to have something like this there you go so now you have something that looks you know it looks nice let's just go for something more red something like that there you go something like that and if you want you can put the same for for other things uh i just saw that we didn't duplicate these meshes here so we're just gonna put it in position very easy just gonna go here and something like this there you go and now we're gonna select all of them and click here and now we have this great so let's take a look at our reference and you will see that this one has like different colors if you want you can go for something like black so for example i want to put this one here it's up to you like for example you can you can go here and change the tint to something like darker if that's something you want to do uh you can definitely do that great so now we have our toy uh it's nice it, it's I, I hope you uh you learn how to model things inside unreal it's uh, it's simple but you can see how you can use these tools to create like uh not so simple objects like we have some uh some complex shapes here um just by adding some materials you are already like adding a lot of variation here so we're gonna try to add this rope here and we're gonna do that by using a blueprint because making ropes is kind of hard and you need like splines to make the shapes you want so we're gonna do that by using blueprints so let's go back to unreal okay um, let me put this one in the other monitor so i can i can check my my reference so what we need to do is to create uh first we need a mesh because without a mesh we cannot extrude the spline so we're gonna go here to the bridge and if you type rope you will see that you have a bunch of ropes here okay we you can just download this one uh let's download the high quality okay and once it's finished oh, it's gonna finish very fast uh let's just add it here and by the way if you don't see it it's here <laughs> okay let's add it and it's done so let's click add okay and now it should be in our 3d assets and you will see that you have like a not sorry not the 
know that treaty assets there you go we have a we have a texture here let's just save it so now uh what we can do is to create a cylinder here let's just go back to modeling go to cylinder and what we can do is to actually preview the material here so we can just go back here and put this arrow here okay and just by doing that what what we can do is change the radius for something like 10 for example yeah this looks like a it's very thick actually so let's go for something like five or maybe something like two that's two things so let's go for something like let's just let's go for something like five okay so five looks like a nice number uh let's go for something like four maybe okay let's just leave it at four so let's click here and accept and now what we can do is to delete these faces here i can go to triangle selection and select this delete it and go back here and delete the faces here okay next thing i want to add is some um some edge loops so i'm gonna go to poly edit and i'm going to insert edge loop okay and let's see how we can put an edge loop here actually instead of doing this we're just gonna go to the remesh okay and now that we have this uh, we can just go back to put something like 500 or 1000 yeah something like that and you see that the silhouette is changing that's okay so we can use like shape preserving or uniform or something like that uh we can just put five 500 or maybe let's just go for 1000 and maybe we can uh change it later so now that we have our rope we can just create the blueprint here we can just duplicate this and you see uh making the rope like this is not exactly the smartest way so we need to create a blueprint so we're gonna just right click as you save everything right click create blueprint class and we will create an actor we'll do bp uh, rope okay let's save it and let's just double click on this and if you're very new to blueprints i recommend you to watch more tutorials we have we have complete tutorials in blueprints blueprint communication how to create games and everything for me i'm just gonna give you some very simple steps you can create a rope the first thing is you're gonna add a component here and you're gonna type spline and you're gonna type the spline you don't want the spline mesh you want the spline and now that you have here now you have a spline so if i drag my blueprint here i can just drag here if, if you don't see it, make sure you put that game mode here with G. Like right now it's disabled. If you don't see anything, it's because you have the game mode on. Just press G and you will be able to see the spline. So what I can do here is just select the spline points and I can just click out to duplicate. And I can just keep creating different points just by pressing out and duplicating the points. So what this spline needs, it's a mesh. So we're going to go to the construction script, which is basically what will run when we drag the actor into the editor. So we're going to grab the spline and we're going to get the number of spline points. Get number of spline points. This will give us the number of spline points we have. And then we're going to add a loop here. We're going to get a for loop. You don't want for each, you want for loop. Okay. And now that you have this, uh the first index is going to be zero if you're not a programmer you won't understand this but if you do you already know that in programming numbers start from zero so in our case we have like uh one two and three spline points so in this case if we want to go through we want to go to the spline point one we want to add a mesh then we want to go to the spline point two we want to add another mesh and we want to go to the spline point three and add another mesh. That's why this loop is here. Um, so what you need here is to subtract just by putting them minus here, subtract. And 
you can just put minus one. And there you go. Now you're counting from zero. And if you have three, the last one will be two, the zero, one, and two. So first thing is add a spline mesh component. And here, <coughs> sorry, uh, you, you can put the rope here that we created. So in this case, I can just go here. I renamed this uh, as SM rope. Okay, just go here. Click compile. And now you will see here that it's up. It's not really in the right direction. So um, if you don't see this, uh, I'm going to remove the camera for now. Uh, you're going to have this rope here and the element. OK, so you see here that you have the start position and the start engine and the end position and the, you know, the end tangent, right? So. Uh, we're going to set this. We're going to use uh, first, we're going to change the forward axis to C because this is what our mesh is looking is looking forward to the C axis. OK, if our mesh were like this and we bake the, the axis, it will be forward to the X axis, but it's not. It's going to the C. So we can only change this to C and you see that this one is already changing. Now it's not going along the spline because we need to set the start and end points. So what we're going to do is to go here and then uh, set a start and end. And you will see that you have the same, the start position, the tangent, and the end position, and the, uh, and the end tangent here, which is uh, exactly what you have here, uh, but you're going to put it here. So it's going to be very easy. We're just going to you, we're just going to grab the spline, control C and control V. And now we're going to go here and get spline location. Get location at spline point. Okay? And then get uh get tangent at a spline point. There you go. So the first index will be the zero, which will be this one. Now I haven't compiled this because uh, this one has a problem here. Okay. Now the uh, start position will be like the zero, for example, here, and one will be, you know, the next spline point. So what we need to do is just duplicate this one, and let's connect these two here. And instead of putting the index, we're going to put a, a plus and we're going to plus one here. And we're, ju we're just going to connect it. And this will be the end position and the end tangent. And now the target, of course, will be this plane mesh component here. OK, so uh, don't forget. Otherwise, the target will be self, which is the blueprint, and we don't want that. Okay, we need a target here to the spline point. And now we have it. We have our spline point. Now we're gonna put it in position here. So oh, let's delete this one. And let's delete it. We don't really need this. And let's just try to grab the blueprint here we just created. And let's just put it here. And according to my reference, like if you see the reference here, you will see that you have the rope here. And it's like this. It's on top of this thing. So I'm going to put my reference to the right so I can take a look at the, at the rope. So now what I can do is to basically uh, move this and basically wrap this thing around. So I can just um, disable the snapping so it's a little bit easier to work with. And I can just alt click and rotate and I can just move the spline points wherever I want. I can just go back here. Um, I can just actually let me let me move this up a little bit. Let me go to the blueprint and just go like this. And now we can just go here and alt click, rotate. I'll click and rotate. And now we can be more precise here. We can just put it here in position. 
We can do the same here. Alt and click. Okay, and then Alt and click, rotate. And then Alt and click and just close it there. Nobody will see it, so it really doesn't matter if you if you see like there is like a small little thing here. We can always connect it with another another mesh we create. So let's just go here and let's just put it in position. Now if you see, if I see my reference, you will see that this one is actually going like down like this. Right? We can do the same here. And actually we can add a point here. Just something like that. Okay, so now we have like our spline point. We can click it and now duplicate it and put it into position. Now we can just make it a little bit different. You saw that we add more variation here. There you go. And now we can just connect these two splines by adding another blueprint here. Rotate it. And now we can just go back here and just scale it. Okay, and duplicate this one, duplicate this one, and duplicate this one. And we're gonna put it in position here. So let's rotate this and just connect this one here. And this one is already connected. So let's see if it looks like. It looks okay to me. I like it. We can even move it like more down. To have like more like gravity effect. So that's great. I, I think I I like it a lot. Let's just play our game to see how it feels like. So you see that just by adding this rope, we are already adding a lot of variation to our story. Now this concludes our modeling part of the of the tutorial. Uh, I wanted to add this blueprint here so that you can take a look at how you can add more uh, details to your assets very easy. So by this point, we just finished the modeling tutorial, but I didn't want to just leave you here. Uh, what if you want to have a, like a little scene, some small things, something quickly you can do? Well, it's very easy. Um, we can go to bridge here. Uh, if you don't have it, go to add and then go to add quicksell content. And in my local, I download some Japanese assets. You just type Japanese here and you will get them. And for example, I can get this lantern, um, these floors, this wooden ornament. So I already import them. You just need to click add. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Mike, my face was here. Um, you, you just need to click add and there you go. So now, now you can see them. And now what, what you can do is just go here and for example, let's just try to find the ornament. There you go. So this is our Japanese ornament. What we can do is to try to put it in position. So for example, here. And we can just move it. Let's put the snapping here and Actually, let's just move it like uh, 90 degrees in Y axis. Okay. And then we can just go here. There you go. Let's just go a little bit like this, move it a little bit. Great. So now that you have this, uh, you can go here and do the same here. You can just duplicate. You don't need to be exact in the same position as I do, but let's just try to click here, and then move it, and then put it in position here, and then do the same here. There you go. Now you have some nice uh, ornaments you can put. What else you can put? Uh, Where well, there is a lantern here. Uh, let's see if I can find it uh should be around here yeah there there you go you can play with this uh this is not accurate uh, i believe but it's nice 
so we can just try to put a lantern here. You see, it's very small. So what I'm going to do is just to increase the size of this. Not too, not too big. You don't want to uh, mess up with the scale, right? So let me just make it smaller. And just like that, we have our lantern here. And we can put it a little bit to the left if we want. There you go. And we can rotate it a little bit just so that it's more uh, appealing. And let's move it like here. There you go. Look at that. So now that we have this, uh, we have added more props to our environment. Uh, you see that adding these little props, we are not exactly modeling, but we're adding more details to our story. So the next thing I want to do is just put some blur here I can play with. So let me just delete this. Uh, I really don't need it. Let's delete. There you go. So uh, let's add some floor. Uh, let's use it. There should be some floor around here. So let's just try this one. Um, not this one, although it could help. Right, we can put something like this. Uh, what else we can do? We, we can try this one. This one is a little bit too small. Let's try another one. Uh, this one's too uniform. OK, let's just try this one. So what I want to do is to basically create a I'm going to create a grid. So I can basically just, let me put this one here for a moment. Um, I can just duplicate things around and do this kind of stuff. But I want to show you something uh, much more fun. OK, so what I will do, uh, let me just delete this. For some reason, I cannot delete things. There you go. Uh, I will just go to the modeling tab. And then I'm just going to use the pattern. And as you can see here, uh, by default, is a line. I want to put a grid here. And I want to put a count by yeah, 10 by 10. It's OK. But I, I will make sure that all my assets are like in there. Yeah, there is something like that. And also, like, yes, just something like that. So they are like evenly spaced. Uh, what else you can do? You can change the rotation. For example, you can change the Y rotation to be something like this if you want, or the C rotation, if that's what you want. Um, the translation too, like for example, you can have something like this, which is uh, very cool, actually, uh, if you ask me. Uh, you can have endless variations. Um, end scale, like I will put something like 1.2. 1.2 or 1.2, something like that. So we have like different heights. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that, OK? Uh, but, I will, but what I will do is just click here on Separate Actors and click Accept. And what this will do is to create basically separate actors, OK? Um, let me go here to the one I created. Uh, I don't need this anymore, OK? so. Uh, if you play from here, basically you will fall down because there is like no collision, right? So what I will do is just double click on this one. And I can either add the collision here just by hitting apply. Okay. But there is uh, another thing you can do. And I think that's uh, it's worth showing. I can show you how to make collision with the modeling tools. Uh, since we're having the extras here, uh, I might as well give you something different. Uh, what you can do is to put mesh to collision. And once you click on this, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while because it's a nanite mesh. Uh, once you click on this, uh, you will be able to see some of these options. By default, of course, it's the square. OK, but what you can do 
is to put something like convex hull and you will get something like that uh, you can increase like the size of the hull to make it like more have more variation or things like that it really will depend on you um, for me i will just accept and now if i press alt c you will see that i have my collision here with alt c i can just check the collision so i can just play from here now you will have like your floor now let's break it a little bit okay uh enough with the with the magic tricks uh i will just go here um you know just replace some of those with some of these assets here and we can also rotate this around rotate some of those just so that you don't have like a lot of different patterns you can rotate them you can move it up do something like this um or what you can do also is to grab one of this and then just put it like here in position we can always delete one of those and we can just like put it here um we can do the same here having the green ones here will actually help us to for our environment just something something like that let me see at just something something like that and i can just uh delete this one and i can just duplicate this rotate this let me put it in position this is part of level art so don't worry if you don't uh we're gonna do another video uh we're gonna create environment for this so really stay tuned uh it's gonna be nice it's gonna be something uh it's gonna be different okay so for now let's just put things like this and there you go now you have some variation uh it works for me um one last thing um i want to add here is just some props so i can just go here and let me see if i can add something like this uh i mean like a bucket here i can just go here i can just scale it and i can just duplicate this thing I can go back to one here I can make sure it's like rotated like this something like that and I can just move this around there you go and let's put the local mode here here on the top I can put the local so I can rotate the object around this area actually this looks fine to me so now by adding these objects i'm already having like more um you know a little bit of set dressing more scale and i can keep adding more things and more things but we're gonna do that uh in our next environment tutorial for me i just want to show you um let's uh let me remove my face a little bit uh let's just put the sky here and go to the sky atmosphere and let's go scroll down until you find the sky luminance factor and we can try something like this color like this is very anime right uh that's nice uh, let's let's just go for it okay let's just go for it and you can try to play with the settings a little bit if you want um in my case i'm going here and type pop and i'm just gonna change the like the fog density uh, or the secondary fog data but before that let's just scroll down and make sure you have volumetric fog okay so let's see the second fog density it's okay it's okay so let's see the extinction scale there you go a little bit of extinction scale not too much view distance not too much uh, if you want to play with the emissive you can definitely do so something like that if you want uh, I won't do that. So I will just go here. Um, I will basically put like something like this. Okay. So now that I have this, I can just take a screenshot of this. Like for example, I can go here and I can go here out to high resolution screenshot and I can capture this. And there you go. And now when I when I click on this, you will see that I have a screenshot. Um, so that's it. Uh, 
thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you enjoyed make sure to subscribe uh like the video and comment below which kind of video you would like to watch now remember we have a lot of resources in our website so make sure to check them out and if you want to learn more tutorials just check our youtube channels you will find a lot of information uh, i'm out and i will see you in the next time